Please be seated. The court is now back in session. And for this session, the chamber will hear the testimony of a civil party, 2TCCP238. And uh, Councillor Kung Sum On, you may proceed. Kung Sum On, thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to make a brief observation regarding the civil party Om um Supani. During her testimony, I try not to interrupt and that she put the questions to the accuser through Mr. President. I have heard repeatedly the word that she used as she referred to the accused as uh, the criminals. And I think that leads to confusion. Even at uh, this stage, that the, my client, Mr. Kirsten Pond, has found guilty in another judgment. The judgment is uh, being appealed against. For that reason, to refer to my client as a criminal is a, a misunderstanding. It's, a, it's prejudicial. And for that reason, I'm grateful if uh, Your Honor strike of that word or advise other civil parties when they refer to the accused, they should not refer to them as criminals. Thank you, Mr. President. President, thank you for your very good observation, Counsel for Keir and Paul. Court officer, could you usher the civil party to TCCP 238 into the courtroom? President, good morning, Madam Civil Party. What is your name? Civil Party, my name is Chu Kam Lon. President, thank you, Madam Chu Kam Lon. We would like to give you uh, some advice regarding the proceeding with your testimony. Your voice will go through a system which will be interpreted into other languages of the ECCC. And that is a necessary a proceeding. For that reason, before you respond, please uh, look at the tip of the uh, microphone 
in front of you, when the light is red, then it is operational and your voice will go through the system and the interpreters can interpret your testimony into other languages. Question, when were you born? Answer, in the document, uh, that was published long time ago in the search for the truth in uh, that magazine and it was uh, republished in 2010. Question, can you recall uh, when you were born? Uh, please uh, respond to my question. When were you born? Answer, I was born in 1951. Thank you. Question, where were you born? Answer, my birthplace during the Sangkum Ria Nijum was Lekbo Commune, Tramco District, Takao Province, and before 1975, I lived to the west of uh, Depo Market in Phnom Penh. President, I'm asking the place that you were born, not the place where you uh, uh, lived. You could not uh, be born at two different places. So you were born in uh, Tramco District, Takao Province, am I correct? Answer. The first five years, I was at Thnong Rolung Village, Lake Bo Commune, Tramcourt District. Question, where is your current address? Answer. It remains the same at Thnong Rolung Village, Lake Bo Commune, Tramcourt District, Takao Province. Question. From 17 uh, April 1975 to 6 January 79, where did you live and what did you do? Answer. After the liberation in, in 1979, President interrupt. I meant before that, that is from the 17th April 1975 to the 6th January 79, which is simply referred to as the uh, Pol Pot regime. Where did you live during the Pol Pot regime? Answer. During the Pol Pot and Khmer Rouge regime, I lived in the same uh, commune and village in Ligbo Commune, Tramco District and Dhaka Province. Question, what did you do at the time? Answer, I did uh, various things in a mobile uh, unit. Initially, I was assigned to uh, work in the rice fields to transplant seedlings and to harvest rice. Question, what is your father's name? Answer, my father is Chu Tum and my mother is Pan Lum. Question, and your husband's names and how many children do you have all together? <coughs> Answer, my husband named Su Dum alias Noon. He was a military medic, and that was during the Lona regime. And before that, during the Song Kum Rinayum, he was a policeman. Question, how many children do you have? Answer. My eldest child died, and I he had four uh, children that I raised, and when I left Phnom Penh, I was three months pregnant.
President Madame Chugam Lone, as a civil party, you advise that uh, towards the end of your testimony, you are given an opportunity to make a statement of impact on the sufferings that you that uh, you suffered during the Democratic Cambodia regime, if you wish to do so. In pursuant to Rule 91B of the ECCC Internal Rule, the lead co-lawyers for civil parties is given the floor first to question the civil party to come loan. And the time, the combined time for the prosecution and the lead co-lawyers for civil party is one day. Thank you, President. Good morning, Madam Civil Party. You stated before the President that you lived in Les Bourg Commune from 17th April 1975 to 79. My first question is this When did you arrive at Tram Kok? I arrived at the uh, Ontasaum district in Ontasaum and then uh, Tram Kok. In fact, uh, it took me 22 days to walk from Phnom Penh to Ontasaum. We were received by Khmer Rouge and settled in Potesong to the west of Ontasaum market. It's about two kilometers west of Ontasaum market. And at that time, we were not assigned to engage in any work yet. They would uh, monitor us uh, first. Thank you. Which members of your family accompanied you to Tram Kok? I went to Tram Kok with my father, my elder brother, and my elder, my younger brother, and my other brother with his uh, children. Could you please specify the number of children who belong to the brother who traveled with you? He had four children, two sons and two uh, daughters. Je vous remercie. Thank you, madam. Did you also travel with your husband? Yes, I did. And my father was elderly, so was my mother, and we traveled together. Vous avez indiqué tout à you stated to the president that you raised four children. Did the children travel? And did they arrive at Hamcock with you? Yes, they did. They went together. Were you yourself in a particular situation when you arrived at Hamcock? It took us uh, more than 20 days to reach that location, and we ran out of uh, rice when we arrived. And we were uh, given uh, some rice with the corns to mix uh, with the rice, and it was very hard to eat. And then we had a problem with our uh, stomach from eating uh, that uh, corn. I still have uh, my stomach problem now. My husband was 
asked to build a shelter where new people would uh, accommodate, would live there. It was to the south of uh, the commune office. He spent two months there, and the 17 every people from Phnom Penh were put to the north in those uh, series of huts. And after that, my husband was arrested. He was taken at night time. Thank you, Madam Civil Party. You just talked about new people. Were you and your family considered as, quote unquote, new people? Yes, we were considered new people and we did not have uh, a right to gather or to walk freely. For the best people, they had a uh, good rights to eat. As for us, we did not have uh, the same uh, rights. And you, at one night when my husband was taken at uh, 9 p.m., in fact, they came to call him to go for a study session, and I protested why there was such a study session or meeting at 9 o'clock at night. But uh, I was told that the vet called him to go for that uh, study session. So he put on his shirt, and he did not wear his uh, trousers because he was told it was a, a quick uh, meeting, so he wore uh, his uh, scarf and he went with them. Thank you, Madam Civil Party. Can you please tell the court what happened afterwards, after the arrest of your husband? What occurred? after the arrest of my husband. And in fact, when they took him away, I, I peeped. He was walked to the west direction. And his mother also peeped and saw they use a rope to tie his hands behind his back. And in fact, uh, her, his parents were the best people, and I asked them for help, but he could not uh, help him even if he was his uh, biological son. Because at that time, everybody minded his or her own business, so they took him away. And about one and a half hours later, or maybe two hours, then I heard three gunshots. The three militia who came to attack him was the village chief and the commune militia, and they had a, a rifle. And next day, I was sent out from the north of the uh, commune office to another unit in another village to the south of a Ligbo commune office. And I was asked to do all kinds of work, hard work indeed. Following that, did you receive any information regarding your husband's fate? The information that I received was from a few best people who told me that night that my husband was killed behind Ligbo Pagoda, that is to the west of Pagoda in a forest in, in that area. I received that news and my parents-in-law could not save their son they became very emotional. Later on, uh, they became sick and died. 
So, uh, I just like to repeat, I received the information that my husband uh, was arrested. And I was uh, sent to the, to the south of the commune office to engage in rice harvest. And I, in fact, just delivered my baby a seven week after delivery. And I had to harvest the rice in the field near the house, and then I had to come back to the house to breastfeed my baby. And the best people were not asked to harvest the rice. And they ordered me to work hard as my husband was taken away and killed. There was a midwife in the village. However, there was no proper hospital and there was no uh, proper medicine to, to give to me during my child de delivery. Je vous remercie, Thank you, Madame Civil Party. In the interest of clarity, could you please tell us if you were present during the arrest of your husband? Yes, I, I was there. We were uh, sleeping together, and in fact, I protested not to uh, let him go because it was already 9 o'clock at night. And I said that the meeting already ended at 8 o'clock, but they refused, and they said that he needed to attend a meeting, which was a, a study session. And at that time, my baby uh, cried, and they shouted at me to look after the, the baby. So they took him away. And I, in fact, asked them, because the meeting had already ended, as it uh, started at uh, 6.30 and ended at around 8, but they came to take him around 9 o'clock at night. But in fact, he did not attend any study uh, session. He was sent to be killed. And after the fall of the uh, regime, I went to look at the burial site where he was buried. My life was so pitiful. Merci, Madame la Thank you, Madam Civil Party. In your opinion, why was your husband arrested? The reason uh, was that he was a civil uh, public servant since the Sankum Rizniyum, and he also had a rank. And they actually searched uh, a pack of uh, clothing that we had. And the shirt that he wore had a, a photo or an ID card with his rank. And for that reason, he was taken away for that study session. Je vous remercie, madame. Thank you, madame. Uh, you just stated that you were pregnant at the time, and therefore I will ask you a few questions with respect to the child you gave birth to at Tram Kok, as well as the other children around you, and questions pertaining to you and your family. You very briefly mentioned the delivery of your baby. Once you gave birth, did you... Uh, provide care to your child? I took care only of the youngest baby because the other children who, whose age were 10, 12, and 14, they were put in through a, a, a unit. And I only took care of the, uh, the baby, but because I did not have enough food to eat, in fact, at the beginning, we were only given uh, corn to eat. And uh, later on, I cannot remember the month, but it was still in 1975, we were asked to eat uh, communally. And my baby did not have enough to eat. 
So he crawled around and found something to eat. Because we actually lived at the side of a house belonging to uh, the best people, I did not know. Maybe we were new people. We had to live at the side of the best people so that uh, they could monitor us. And because of insufficient food, my baby uh, got sick. That's the youngest one. But after I delivered. My own baby, that baby uh, died, and she died uh, because of the insufficient food. As for my youngest baby, because became uh, sick, and also later died. As for my elder children. They worked in a unit, and one of them also died. Thank you, Madam Civil Party. Once again, for clarification, you stated that you arrived at Hamcock with four children, and that you yourself were pregnant at the time. If I gather your testimony correctly, two of the children who arrived with you died. Uh, by lack of sustenance and nourishment, is that correct? Do I have a proper understanding of what you are telling us today? The one child died of uh, insufficient food, and another died while he was at a unit, and that uh, child's unit was. Uh, located or worked to the east of uh, Tamok's house, not uh, at Lipo village with me. I was told my by elder siblings that uh, that uh, the son was uh, killed and maybe they embalmed him, and he was buried under a coconut tree. Thank you. Therefore, you had one small child who died uh, by lack of food and another child who worked uh, in an area away from your place of residence and the elder son passed away. Is that correct? Answer, yes. It's true. Uh, the older died because he picked up the potato to eat. He did not have enough food to fill his stomach, and then he went to pick up uh, the uh, potatoes, and he was killed. I was told uh, of the incident. I live in uh, Vihir Kapoor. I was told uh, at during lunch time that a Wanara was killed because uh, Wanara went to uproot the tet uh, the potato to eat, and uh, Wanara was about uh, 13 and 14 years old at the time. He was in cha children unit. Je vous remercie, madame. Thank you, Madam Civil Party. One final question regarding your children. You stated that you were uh, pregnant when you arrived at Hamcock and you delivered your child at Hamcock. Were you able to care for the baby? Answer, as I told you, after I delivered the baby for 27 days, I went to work in the farm to harvest. And when the baby cried, my mother would call me so that I could uh, breastfeed the baby. And after breastfeeding, I went back to the field to harvest uh, at 10.30. My mom would go to collect um, rice for me to eat. I did not go to eat. Thank 
Je vous remercie. Thank you, madame. Thank you, madame, civil party. I will now put a few questions to you regarding other members of your family you referred to at the beginning of your examination. You talked about uh, the family member, a brother who arrived in Phnom Penh with you. Can you explain to the chamber what happened to that brother? And, sir, my elder brother, not elder sister, my elder brother's name was Chu Teng. He went together with me, my elder sister. She went uh, on national, national road number one. My elder brother, Chu Teng, he went with me. He lived uh, in a village west of Angmarie and Lebo. And my sister live in unit six and I live in unit three near the village hall. So we lived in different places. And as for my brother, his wife got uh, four children. Qu'est-il arrivé à ce frère, Madame la Partie Civile? What happened to that brother, Madame Civil Party? No. Answer. My elder brother, he worked in the uh, unit responsible for ploughing the field. His name was registered to be killed. That was in 1977. He was in a unit responsible for flapping the field in 1977. He tried uh, to instigate his uh, peer to revolt, and he pleaded to into Vietnam. He came to my parents, and he said that he would go. And after a few days, he was arrested and killed at uh, Chom Rong Mountain in another cooperative. Est-ce que vous pouvez? Thank you, Madam Civil Party. Could you please be, please be more precise with regard to his departure? How did he get to Vietnam? according to what you stated today. How did he get there? Who accompanied him? How did he manage to escape to get there? How did you know that he was executed? Which is what you just stated today. Answer. I know about this because I was at home. There was a based uh, woman, she cooked for uh, caterers. In the Lebo, uh, K1 was the uh, model cooperative. And this old lady uh, came to my house and told my mother that uh, your son uh, was arrested to be killed. And at uh, K1 units, uh, my uh, elder brother was uh, bitten and uh, was forced to drink uh, fish sauce. And this old lady told me about this. I did not witness the, uh, the event. So those who fled into Vietnam as And my, um, among those, there was my father, and my father was uh, arrested and bitten, and also he was forced to drink uh, fish sauce. Merci, Madame la Partie Civile. Thank you, Madame Civil Party. F from what I have understood, you did not witness the execution of your brother. Can you tell us why you think he escaped? 
Do you have information on how he left Tramcock? Answer. When he fled, he got a package of a meal, the flowers for making uh, Khmer noodle, and then he got a bag of rice and a mat for sleeping in the forest. The old lady told me about this. Uh, she was in K1 cooperative. My brother, I was told that my brother uh, seized a, uh, a gun, a rifle from a militiaman, and then he fled uh, into Vietnam. He was chased, and after that, uh, my brother was arrested uh, to be killed. Merci, Madame la Partie Civile. Thank you, Madame Silver Party. You also referred to another brother. Can you tell us what happened to him? Answer, as for my other elder brother, he was a soldier in Dakao province, in Sub Barak. He was a soldier for a long time, and he got uh, quite high rank. When he reached at uh, Jompa Pagoda, he was uh, tightened up. And I was told that he was brought to a study session, and he gone, he's gone and never returned. My mother was told that uh, he Rather, my uh, elder, my elder sibling-in-law told me that uh, he went to his village uh, place. My son, uh, the uh, the son of my elder pra uh, brother, he was a monk, and then he was asked to disrobe so that he could uh, carry a rifle to liberate uh, Takao. And later on, my niece was known that he was the son of an enemy. His father was a soldier with a quite high rank. And after he was this rope, he got married to a woman, a medic, and uh, my niece was known as the enemy, the son of an enemy. And then uh, it, it was said that uh, my niece's father was a soldier. My, my niece... My, my, my nephew, rather, my nephew uh, got married to a female medic, and the female medic was asked to disembowel uh, my nephew so that uh, he, so that she could get a de Gaulle bladder. The female uh, medic uh, uh, could do this because she wanted to uh, uh, go to a higher rank. Thank you, Madam Witness. I will move on and ask you about your ex experiences when you were in Tramcock. Were you able to move about freely in Tramcock? An answer, we could uh, walk we could move between 11 to uh, 1 p.m. We could uh, move uh, during a lunch break. We could visit our relatives. We, had, we would have to return back uh, in time for our work. Otherwise, we would be blamed. Uh, we could move uh, secretly. Uh, that is what we called uh, the... Uh, prison without war. We live in a prison without war, and uh, we got a 
heavy duty to perform as well. Merci, Madame la Part Thank you, Madame Civil Party. To, to ask a follow-up question on your last remark and the difficulties you faced, can you describe to the Chamber the difficult tasks you carried out when you got to Tamkak? Answer, I remember all the duties, uh, the sufferings that I got. I was asked to transplant rice, and I could do whatever they asked me to do. Otherwise, I would be killed because I was accused as a daughter of a, a former s civil servant. I was a daughter of an enemy. I was asked to uh, pick up or to uncover the feces. I could do whatever I was asked to. I was asked to also dig the canal, and I was also asked to uh, uh, transplant a plot, a six hectare plot of land uh, with only seven people. I could do so because uh, I got experience. Merci, Madame la Partie Civile. Thank you, Madame Silver Party. A while ago, you stated, uh, talking about 10.30 p.m., uh, can you tell us exactly what was your work schedule? Did that work schedule change from one year to the other? Just give the uh, Chamber an idea of uh, your work schedule. Answer. I got a small baby. That's why I could uh, excuse from work at 10.30. And for other, they would be excused from work at 11 or 11.30. So we would be asked to work anywhere, any cooperative, whenever they wanted us. Merci, Madame la Partie Civile. Thank you, Madame Civil Party. Earlier this morning, or perhaps yesterday, we heard the testimony of another Civil Party who stated that when people were suffering or tired, or sick or tired, they could rest and not have to work. Is that what happened to you? Answer. When I was asked to transplant, and I uh, work, I was working very hard, and I had to breastfeed my baby because we, because I had to transplant in the fields, and uh, I they were afraid that I would collapse at that time, and I was. Uh, released uh, to to get you know a massage on uh, my coin massage on my body and whenever we got our baby got sick and then uh, we would be accused as for my m baby because uh, my baby was breastfed sometime he or she uh, got diarrhea we would need to take care of the baby. As for me, I had to collect uh, rice or meal from a cooperative. And the day after, uh, we had to work again. And as food uh, ration, uh, it was very strict if we did not uh, perform our work, we would not uh, get our meal. Pour rebondir sur cette Just one follow-up question based on the last question, uh, the last response that you could not rest. 
Can you tell the chamber what were the consequences if someone who was sick could not work? You said you were not fed. Were there any other consequences? Answer. We would work in the morning if we return to work and then we would get our food ration. Although our baby was, uh, did not recover from uh, the disease yet, uh, we would need to go back to work to get a food ration. If we uh, had to rest uh, for a very long time, uh, we would also be taken away to be killed. Merci, Madame le, euh, la... Thank you, Madame Silpati. You have talked about the fear of being executed if you didn't work for the second time now. Can you explain to the chamber why you were afraid of being executed? Answer. We were accused that uh, we were 17 April people. We were accused that we were lazy. We did nothing. That is why so they would need to smash all of us. And those who had relation or were linked to uh, civil servants in the past former regime uh, we would be killed since uh, we were 17 April people. We were afraid of being killed. That is why whenever we were asked to do our work, we uh, would try to perform them. Thank you, Madam Civil Party. A little earlier in your testimony, you stated that a few months after you arrived in Tramcock, you are eating in common. Can you explain how the meals were distributed or how you ate? You. Answer, as for communal eating, we work hard in our field and the field was green, very green. And uh, the field sometimes look very golden and as for communi communal eating, uh, there was a port, a soup port in the middle of us, and we could uh, have only a spoonful of uh, rice, and we could not have enough meal. And we dare not to say anything, although uh, we were not full, if we uh, accidentally slipped if the word slips out of our tongue accidentally that uh, we were not fooled, uh, we would be taken away to be killed or to a study session. I would like to mention about two ladies. Uh, could I do so, Mr. President? President, you may answer to the question put by party. You may not uh, provide your answer beyond the question asked. Your answer should be uh, full enough so that uh, we understand. Merci. Merci, Madame la Thank you, Madame Civil Party. I have other questions as a follow up to what you have just stated. As far as you can remember, did you have the impression that when you were eating in common, the quality of the food had dropped. Did you have enough to eat when you started eating in common? Dad. Answer, the food ration was reduced. Sometime when the, the rice uh, was not delivered, uh, our food ration would be reduced. Uh, the the grains of cereal would be reused and the gruel would, all, would in, be instead mixed with a potato. 
sweet potatoes in some on some occasions when the, the rice was not enough for all of us. So the gruel would be mixed with uh, sweet potatoes on some occasions. Merci, Madame la part Thank you, Madame Civil Party. Still, to the best of your recollection, did the new people have the same food as the base people? Were they eating the same food? Hope not. Answer. Base people ate together with us, but in their shelter or their house, they had their own rice uh, to have additional meal in the morning. As for new people, we did not have such uh, latitude. We did not a have extra rice. We could eat only in the communal eating. That is why some people complained that they did not have enough food, and as a result, they would be taken away to be killed. Merci, Madame la Partie Civile. Thank you, Madame Civil Party. In order to understand exactly what you were saying, were you often hungry? Were you always hungry after the meals? He answered, yes, absolutely. I was absolutely hungry. Sometime I would, uh, I, I had, I had uh, a sarong with me, so I would batter the sarong or skirts uh, with a base people uh, near living close to uh, my place, and I would cook uh, rice or gruel uh, in the kettle at night time so that uh, Anka would not know. Merci, Madame la Partie. Thank you, Madame Civil Party. A while ago, you gave us a list of the assignments that you carried out from the time when you arrived in Tramcock. You talked of transplanting rice, picking up excrements, and the last task was digging canals. Can you please explain to us further what that last task consisted, consisted in when did you have to dig canals? Answer. It was from 1976 until dry season of 1977. After harvest, I would be required to go to dig canal near the embankment in the rural area. And I uh, was required to build, uh, you know, the uh, big embankment to be the roads so that we could uh, reach at the headwork. I was asked to dig canal uh, for a period of uh, 15 days. And at that time, I met some uh, leaders of Khmer Rouge, that is the uh, leaders of uh, Democratic Kampuchea, when I was asked to dig a canal, canal in 1977. I uh, was uh, walking and could see uh, four of them, including Tamok. At that time, they were talking to uh, the uh, worker that we uh, need to attack uh, our work so that uh, we could uh, got water to farm on the west of the real road. So we need to attack uh, in our work so we could reach to a prosperous 
future and having uh, rice to eat. And after that, we would need, we would have uh, energy. Later, uh, after digging uh, the canal and after God, after uh, having good harvest, uh, we would not also get uh, enough rice to eat. Three of my colleagues, three of my peers, disappear because uh, they complained that uh, they did not have enough to eat. And uh, my uh, three peers, uh, they complained that they could not have enough food, so, and then after that, uh, they uh, were they disappeared. Merci. Thank you, Madam Civil Party. To be absolutely sure that I properly understood the chronology of the events you described, you stated that you arrived, you started uh, digging the, the canals, and in 1977, did you say that you saw on that site a number of Khmer Rouge leaders? Do you recall at what time precisely, at what period precisely, you saw those persons? Answer, I saw them in 1977, I do not recall the month, the exact month, whether it was in February, it was in March, April, or May. It was long time ago. The three leaders, they were in car. They stopped at the headwork in Kuljambak area, and they were looking at us carrying earth. The commune uh, committees and uh, head of the units were with them. A few days later, three of my peers disappeared. President, thank you. It is now convenient time for break. From now until 1.30 in the afternoon so that we can resume our hearing. Court officer, you are instructed to facilitate a proper place for civil party during the break time and have her return before the bench enter the courtroom. Security personnel, you are instructed to bring Mr. Kirsten to the holding cell downstairs and have him back before 1.30 p.m. The court is now adjourned.